Hey guys, my name is Jason. I am the founder of Distress Loan Advisors. I have been helping people settle SBA debt since 2009. Um, so when you're looking around on the internet and you find people who have great hashtags and great YouTube channels about SBA stuff and they're talking like experts, do a little digging. Find out how much experience they actually have. Because there's a difference between reading online about it and actually doing it. I've settled hundreds of loans for people. I've talked to thousands of people. And I was a workout officer for the largest SBA lender in the country. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. What I want to talk about today is the question I would ask if I were you. So the question if I were you that I would ask me. And the question is, why would I pay someone to fill out a bunch of paperwork that I can you know, clearly fill out myself. I filled it out when I applied for the loan. I can fill out paperwork when I'm trying for an offer and compromise. And the answer is, when you're trying to get an offer and compromise approved, you're actually trying to prove to them that you cannot afford to pay back this loan in full over a reasonable period of time. And the analogy that I always give for my services is um, redoing your kitchen. If I was going to redo my kitchen, I physically can do it, right? I, I can hold a hammer and hold a saw, um, and I can research all the different ways to change out the cabinets and do the plumbing and all that stuff. But the question is, how likely am I to screw something up along the way? Not because I'm dumb, not because I'm um, incompetent. It's because I don't have the experience. And so the question is, would I rather hire somebody who's done it a thousand times or do I want to try to do it myself and make mistakes along the way? Now, the problem with doing that with the offer and compromise is sometimes you only have one chance. So in other words, you submit an offer and if the lender says no, they might close their file, refer it to the SBA. Next thing you know, you're going to be at the treasury. So I guess my answer is experience. Just like anything else in life, you go to a doctor when you're sick, you go to a dentist when you have a toothache and you know you call the seasoned professional when you want to redo your kitchen. Um, you know, Spending money to have an expert do something for you, it doesn't guarantee there won't be problems. It doesn't even guarantee that you're going to be successful. I never ever guarantee success because I think it's ridiculous to do so. There's a lot of factors at play. We've got the lender who institutionally may have their own rules. Um, and then you've got the individual workout officer, and I can tell you, it runs the gamut. You have people who are willing to just rubber stamp anything because they don't really care, and then you got people who see themselves as like the gatekeeper to offer and compromise, and they're hell bent on making your life difficult. So, you, there's no way you can ever guarantee anything, but I can tell you that the odds of something getting approved when I work on it is probably higher than the odds if you work on something. Um, regardless of how much research you do. Because it's one thing to read um, the SBA rules and regulations. The, it's another thing to have been through uh, approvals and declines because it's given me some insight into the sorts of things that they look for when they're evaluating the offer and compromise. Because a lot of the questions I get are around, you know, how does the SBA look at this particular thing? Or how are they going to view it um, if I make this much money or how are they going to view it if um, I have a, my family gave me a loan and I have to pay them back? Um, how are they going to view it if my spouse didn't guarantee but they've got a high paying job? So there's all these like little things um, that if you don't know, it kind of snowballs, it kind of adds up. Um, and so this is not to say that people you know haven't... Um, attempted to do this and you know i'm sure some people have been successful but when it comes to this stuff it's all about playing the odds in my opinion and so you can you know pay somebody uh who's been doing this since like i said 2009 i worked for this lender um basically starting in 2008 and i quit in 2010 and i did a little moonlighting in 2009 uh, so I've, you know, I've seen a lot and I've got a lot of insights. And so that's it. I mean, that's, that's the secret sauce here. It's, it's not me coercing the SBA. It's not me. Um, and a lot of people ask this question, like, well, what can you do to help me hide my assets? And that's, that is not what I do. Um, if anyone tells you that they can hide your assets, um, I'd be a little leery of that. There are assets. 
um, asset protection measures you can take, and I'm sure there's you know some lawyers who will handle that. But keep in mind, when you're trying to settle your SBA debt, they're expecting you to do it in good faith. So in other words, if you um, own a home and you transfer it to your cousin's name and then claim, well, I don't own a home, um, likewise, if you you know you've got half a million dollars in cash and you you know put it in your kid's um, bank account and then try to claim that you don't have it, like those are the sorts of things um, that the SBA they look they're on the lookout for because there actually is a section within the SBA um, 770, which is the offer and compromise, um, the personal financial statements specifically for offer and compromise. And they ask, have you transferred assets in the last three years? Because they're looking for stuff like that. So anyway, so what I do is I don't, what I don't do is help people hide assets. What I do is help people basically give the SBA the best look at your financial situation so they completely understand it. Because a lot of this is, unfortunately, you're negotiating against yourself. In other words, you're not at a table with your lender or the SBA saying, I'll give you 100000 and then the, the SBA says, oh, I want 200000 It generally doesn't work like that. The way it does work is we submit a package of information and we have to proactively figure out what are the obstacles here and how do we overcome them? So what are the, what are the objections that the lender's gonna have to settling with you? And what does that mean in terms of monetary monetary value? Like, what are we going to have to offer them? So, so that's what I do. That's the value that I bring. Um, it's not in coercing the lender into doing what I want. I don't have, you know, it's not like a movie or a TV show where I've got a friend who owes me a favor. Um, but what I do have is a lot of experience. And so when I submit these things directly to the SBA, it depends if your lender has closed the file, but sometimes we do submit directly to the SBA. Um, I've worked with all those people and I think they've come to expect that um, what I submit is going to be reasonable. I don't believe in lowballing or wasting people's time. So that's it. That's the question. If I were you, would ask me is why do I need to pay you to fill out the paperwork? And the answer is experience. I specialize in this. There's very few people who do what I do, and there's even fewer who have the depth of experience that I have. So um, with that said, I know a lot of people are still going to try to do it themselves. Good luck. Totally get it. Um, but if you are in need, if you need help, if you're not sure if I would be the right person to help you, you can schedule a consultation. And that's why I created the case evaluation as a service. Basically, it's $250, so you're not getting... Um, you know, beat over the head with huge fees for that $250. We'll go over your situation. And I'll let you know what your options are. Um, with that, I say, I have a request for you. Please don't email me and give me all your information and essentially ask me to do a case evaluation prior to the case evaluation in order for me to tell you if it's worth it to do a case evaluation. That's really what the case evaluation is for. I'm getting a ton of people who are asking, you know, lots of questions, a lot of EIDL stuff, a lot of regular SBA stuff. So unfortunately, I do not have the time to go back and forth and convince you that it's worth it. I mean, guys, it's $250. So if you have half a million dollars and you're not willing to spend $250 to at least get a little bit of direction, um, I'm probably not the guy for you. Sorry. Um, so that's it. I appreciate you watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.